Okay, so we're going to uh, wrap this quarter up, coming up here. Uh, this is going to be uh, the last lecture uh, for um, digital forensics or e-discovery, whichever you'd prefer to call it, see just 466. Uh, this is one of my favorite lectures. I dig on this because uh, uh, we're going to kind of show you guys some uh, kind of cool and, and scary stuff. Uh, so basically you guys will have your uh, uh, test, uh, your test that you have to complete. Um, you should be getting those back to me hopefully uh, this week. And then um, we're going to have our, our basically our final exam uh, is going to be the last thing. So uh, this lecture is kind of more a fun lecture. Uh, I may give you guys a little project on it, uh, but nothing crazy. But before we do that, I want to I want to cover a few things, okay? Uh, everything I've been seeing lately um, in the news because of the pandemic, uh, all the really smart people have books behind them. If you look at all the interviews, everyone has a book behind them. And I truly believe that uh, based on those books, you could kind of tell the character of a person. So what I did is I found some books, okay, because I, I, I want to be like those guys. I found this book uh, on top of our grandfather clock. It had been sitting there for gosh knows how long. I don't know, uh, honestly, if anyone's ever read it, but it's a book. So I want you guys to see it. Um, this is kind of who I am, okay. Uh, the other book I want to talk, uh, show you uh, that I will have behind me is my Kodokan Judo book, okay. Uh, this is very important. So this is another book teach you teaches you how to choke people and stuff. So it's very cool. Okay, so we have that. And let's see. How about crime crushers? Okay, I think this is like from the 80s. Pretty sure. Very cool book on uh, uh, cartoons. Uh, kind of a cool patrolman guy that uh, I think use it as a stress reliever. Anyhow. This is a book I would have behind me. I found this book. I don't know that I've really read it, but it's on my Benelli M4 tactical shotgun. Uh, kind of a very cool shotgun. Uh, it was there, so I'm showing it to you. This is what I would have behind me. And last but not least, I have one more book. Kind of summarizes who I am as a human being, a thoughtful caring human being i have my best joke book uh, i think a student gave this to me a while back um, in the uh kind of silly idea that i need help with my jokes so anyhow if books describe who you are as a human being then these are me okay so we're gonna put these behind me here okay ah, there you am now i'm just like those dudes on the news okay uh there are my books can you see them mm. Mm. Oh, all right mm -hmm. so anyhow uh <laughs> let's get into the uh lecture this is a fun lecture uh one of the things um i like to do is show you guys hey there's a lot of bad stuff out there um now what's interesting is how accessible everything is okay uh, one of the things I talk about is, uh, gosh, how, how would I say this? If I ever wanted to go to the dark side, oh my gosh, okay? Uh, the stuff me and a lot of my partners know, how to make checks, counterfeit checks, how to, how to make counterfeit credit cards. Uh, we could even, if we wanted to, counterfeit currency. Um, hacking, all sorts of stuff like that, okay? Uh, the reason we don't is because we happen to be decent, functioning, uh, caring human beings that, that would not do something like that. But uh, one of my jobs is to kind of prepare folks for, for what's really out there. So I always say, what if, what if you were just so inclined one day to say, hey, you know what, I want to commit check fraud. Uh, you know, one of those things, right? You know, we hear of people stealing checks from the mail and then taking the check and dip it into some sort of of uh, solvent to remove the, the ink from it and then rewriting the checks. That's so old school. 
um, that, that, that technology went away about 20 years ago. Um, I guess guys still do it, but the problem is it's easy to identify because you get this really, 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 uh, um, kind of, a ugly check that it does appear it's been in water. It's all faded and stuff and it stinks because of the, the solvent that they've dipped it in. Um, it's not a great technology and we tend to see this with our folks that just run in steel mail or maybe, uh, uh, locate these items in a dumpster or something like that okay uh, but the really cool uh, guys who are committing this sort of crime um, you get blank checks okay how hard is it to get blank checks okay well it's not that hard so you go to Amazon right amazon.com and you type in blank checks and guess what happens here's what you get uh, here we have the general manual business checks, but you could also get personal checks. They're on there too. Uh, I like these because you could get 250 checks and you basically just complete them. So they're blank checks that you would complete. Pretty good price. Not a bad uh, deal there. Have them ship right to your house or you could have them shipped to your neighbor's house if you want to get your neighbor in trouble. Okay. So that's where I get my blank checks from. Okay. Now. If you look at the checks, uh, you'll see that they have kind of a unique font. Uh, perhaps not anything you could find on Microsoft Word, okay? Specifically, the, the numbers on the bottom of the check, uh, the routing number, the account number. Uh, the, the way the, the, the font is, it's very specific, very unique, okay? So how in the heck am I going to get... Uh, a check to look like it was produced properly at a at a real place so like maybe a check writing software well guess what go to amazon.com and type in check writing software and you will come up with i, I'm, I just grabbed the first hits here uh check soft personal deluxe okay this is check writing software you just put in your computer uh, typically a CD and um, download it and there you are. Then you stick your blank checks you got in there and you start producing these checks. And uh, they will create the font uh, across the bottom that you would need uh, for uh, a particular banking machines to be able to read, whether it's a bank or, or uh, you know, any other sort of uh, check reader. Okay, so what is that? Uh, I think these things are like $29 free delivery. Uh, you get it pretty quick. So right to your house or to your neighbor's house. Okay. So then you're like, okay, I'm ready to roll, right? Yeah, perhaps if you take it to a place that doesn't specialize in checks, uh, maybe a liquor store or something like that. But anyhow, uh, we won't even get into all that. But I need a special ink. A lot of people don't realize that these checks have a special ink. It's a magnetic ink. Uh, not anything that comes with your Epson or anything like that, okay? Um, so where in the heck am I going to get this ink? Guess what? Amazon.com, okay? Uh, so here we got Versa ink. Uh, it's a universal refill kit, uh, $29.99. And it's uh, specifically uh, designed for your MICR format. That's the magnetic ink uh, that's used on these checks. So when you stick this thing in the, in the bank at uh, your preferred bank or credit union, it's going to read it, okay, uh, because of the magnetic ink. So there's everything you need to commit check fraud. Uh, I'm not telling you guys how to make counterfeit checks because guess what? The bad guys already know. They do. Uh, it's out there. Uh, but I would like you guys to be aware of this and how accessible this stuff is. We're, we're not going to some like, you know, black market location to find these items. We get them right on Amazon and they could be legally shipped, legally purchased and shipped to your home. Okay. Uh, so here's what I'm asking of you. Maybe you guys are over at a friend or acquaintance house and all of a sudden you see blank checks, magnetic ink, 
uh, check writer software. Unless these folks own a, a company where they're creating their own checks for their own business, do me a favor, give me a call, because I would like to know that, okay? Uh, and I'll, I'll discuss it with them, okay? So, what if you don't like checks? Checks are kind of, uh, I don't know about you guys, I don't write a bunch of checks anymore. It's kind of old school, right? Old tech. Uh, so what do we use nowadays? Credit cards, plastic, yeah. Okay, so credit cards. I remember 25 years ago, it was really hard to get credit card blanks. You had to go to like the Russian mob and stuff. And, you know, you see it in the movies. Oh, I'm meeting with the Russian mafia and we're, they're going to give me 100 credit card blanks. Amazon. Amazon.com. Guess what? I could order oh, 100 of these things. Uh, oh, by the way, they have the new chip on it, too. That's kind of cool. So... Uh, you know, now that's the, oh, does your card have a chip? If it doesn't have a chip, we're not going to accept. Oh yeah, I got a chip on it. I bought them from Amazon. Okay. A uh, hundred pack. Uh, what is this? 69 bucks. Not bad. Cause you figure each car you're going to make is you're going to, you, know, you know, roll up a lot more, uh, profit than that. But yeah, right there, right on Amazon. Okay. All right. So anyhow, now I got this weird, creepy, uh, blank credit card okay with nothing on it okay so uh, we've discussed in class how do we uh, take information off the card or how do we put information onto the card well it's just a it's a storage device it's a data storage device so what I need is this really weird device called a reader writer a reader writer it's like an encoder okay where in the heck would I get one of those go to amazon.com and you type in uh, credit card reader writer. And this is the first one I came up with that even has Bluetooth. That's kind of cool. So you, you don't even have to have this thing wired up. You can walk around with it in your pocket. Okay. So it's a writer encoder card swipe scanner. Uh, it's a little costly, 169 bucks. But again, for your profit, you're going to make off these things pretty amazing. So I could swipe onto this card, download the information, and then place that information onto another card uh, you know I, I need a little bit of skill technology wise but uh, it's not that hard I'm sure there are even tutorials on the dark web on these things okay um, but yeah I mean there it is right there everything you need uh, let's see so now now I have my blank credit cards with a chip now I've uh, acquired some other uh, uh, credit card information and I've placed it onto my blank credit card. So now I can't go into I can't go into Circuit City if those places even exist anymore, or Zodis or Jimco. Okay, uh, I can't go into those places and show this blank card. They're gonna laugh at me, right? So what I need to do is I need to get something that makes that really cool uh, graphic on the credit card, right? Like you know, if I want to have like uh, you know my favorite football team or my favorite uh, college or, uh, even a picture of me. Okay. That's, that's real popular. So where am I going to find a device that prints onto a credit card? Amazon.com. Okay. Now these things are a little expensive, but they're pretty cool what they do. Uh, now they're not, they're not necessarily specifically designed for credit cards. They're just designed for any sort of, uh, Mag magnetic strip uh, card storage device so like your ID cards at work and, and things like that but you can make some really cool credit cards on these things okay so here we have the the Badgy 200 color plastic ID card printer um, basically everything you need to put whatever you want on a credit card to make it believable okay so now I have my blank credit card that I've downloaded uh, your credit card info onto it, okay? And then I put a really cool picture of my favorite lacrosse team on there, okay? Um, okay, and that's all good, but now it's kind of a flat card. Don't I need those little raised letters and stuff on there? Well, that's kind of weird. I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to make that, right? Well, just go to Amazon.com and guess what? They have embossers. So we have a manual credit card 
uh, embosser and embossing machine. It, t- it kind of is it even, I, I'm not saying what's what, but what I'm saying is if you look in the background of this thing, they actually have credit cards. I mean, they're not even trying to hide it. Um, can you make your own credit card for a business? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, as long as you're willing to carry that debt and all of that. But yeah, I mean, um, I, I think there's a lot that goes uh, goes along with that. Um, so one of the things I wanted to kind of show you guys here is how easy and accessible this stuff is for the bad guys. Uh, again, can I make my own checks? Yeah, if I choose to, I could make my own personal checks in my home. I, that way I don't have to go order them through my bank and all that. I think it's easier and uh, saves a lot of time to just order them through the bank. But yeah, I can make my own checks. Uh, and there are all the supplies there I could do it. Businesses do it all the time because they're, they're putting out so many checks. So it's a legitimate thing to do at times. Same thing with credit cards, believe it or not. I mean, it's not... A, a terrible thing you have those folks at swap meets or or other places or maybe uh point of sale is is a uh kind of a transient operation you know like our, our vendors that uh sell at different locations so they may have a uh kind of the bluetooth uh reading device scan your card and then charge it later okay um so these are all things that more or less are are you're able to legally possess however crooks use them and they just uh, have a field day i just wanted you guys to see how easy it was to to commit this sort of crime now uh here's the the other side of the story we catch these guys uh i know it may not seem like it and they they may get away with it for a while but eventually we catch up to them um so uh my handcuffs are nickel plated they're very old uh, they're oversized handcuffs. They actually still have the old 909 area code from them from like 25 years ago. Uh, but they are nickel plated. So if you decide to start making your own checks or credit cards for fraudulent reasons, um, please check with your doctor to see if you're allergic to nickel because I'm going to be putting these things on you. Okay. And then uh, while you're at while you're at Amazon or wherever, you may also want to check a couple other things. Um so what do people wear in jail? Okay, they wear orange jumpsuits in jail. So I found this one here, which was pretty good. It looks kind of like what these guys wear in jail. Uh, you may want to purchase one that fits you because as I understand, when you go into jail, uh, they may give you one that's a little bit too big or too small. So make sure you custom fit yourself for a proper uh, orange jumpsuit for when you go to jail, if you decide to do this illegally. Uh, the other thing, this guy in this picture is wearing black shoes. That's so stupid. Don't do that. Uh, you got to get these really cool sandals here. Uh, I didn't know these were actually, a, a, I guess, a, a label, Bob Barker. But these are the the sandals our crooks wear in our jails. So you want to make sure you get a your, your right size so that uh, if you do decide to start creating uh, – fraudulent checks or credit cards that you have the proper size fitting sandals okay um anyhow uh we're we're at the end of the road guys i think uh i think we've been doing pretty good uh i know it's been kind of a uh tough one getting through these uh, courses online uh and i hope you got to relax a little bit during this lecture um just something for you guys to know and um basically the next thing we have uh is our final and after you guys finish test one for me um we have our final so uh anyhow i hope you enjoyed the lecture and i will see you guys uh soon take care